Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What is going on, everybody? My name is Zell Prince. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, a while ago, I mentioned I would react to SCP-029 in a previous reaction video. I don't know when this was. This was a while ago, maybe like a month ago, when I said I'd react to SCP-029, Daughter of Shadows. And now I'm finally getting into it because I found the video. And luckily enough, it's made by SCP Explained anima Animation. Yeah, story and animation. I'm trying to remember that name off the top of my head because I've watched them so much. Oh, I'm trying to remember that name. But without delay, this SCP did interest me in that video I reacted to a while back. So we're going to go ahead and react to this in three. Cool. Fine. Nero. Dr. Bethany Moore was exhausted. Yeah, for me. She'd been pulling an all nighter to digitize some old files about SCP 2317 the door to another world, and she could feel herself nodding off little by little as the night drew on. For Dr. Moore, it'd been a whole week of long days, something even worse when you work at a job as stressful as being a researcher for the SCP Foundation, and the exertion yeah. was starting to catch up with her. At around 2.30 a.m., she sighed, rolled back her office chair, and decided to take a quick break to grab a coffee and refuel. If she didn't get some pretty hardcore caffeine in her over the next few minutes, she was absolutely going to pass out on her keyboard. The fact that the rooms in the facility were kept at a relatively low light at this time of night to save power really wasn't helping her fatigue. No. Dr. Moore dragged herself down to the break room, too tired and too focused on her work to notice that things were eerily quiet. She was punching in her order for the largest espresso available. She <laughs> is, noticed is that the SCP vending machine? I forgot the number and I just heard it recently again. So through an SCP video I, <laughs> I had already seen. <laughs> I've rewatched SCP videos every now and then off screen, at least the ones I've already seen that you guys know of. So <laughs> that's how I keep myself continually uh, up to date with all this stuff. Sorry if I'm coughing. I'm Still have uh, COVID in my system a little bit. Let's go watch a previous S reaction video to find out what's going on. The quiet sound of footsteps approaching her from behind. Slow, methodical, and unsettling, especially at this kind of hour. She turned and felt an immense relief wash over her. It was just security officer Chuck Walker, one of the regular guards at this site. Dr. Moore and security officer Walker weren't exactly best friends but they'd cross paths on the job on numerous occasions, and they'd always been polite, friendly, hmm. and cordial any time they'd directly interacted. A Not a usual thing you see at the SCP Foundation. Hey, Chuck, she said while her coffee began to pour into the less than environmentally friendly styrofoam cup behind her. Long <laughs> night, working hard or hardly working, huh? Security Officer Walker didn't respond. It was only now that Dr. Moore seemed to register just how dark the break room was. Really, the only source of light was the soft glow coming from the coffee machine itself. But light or no light, she could see something was wrong with Walker. His eyes seemed oddly distant, like he wasn't even looking at her. He was looking through her, off into some unknown place. Dr. Moore cleared her throat. Everything okay, Chuck? Before she could even finish her sentence, Chuck's hands were clasped around her throat. The movement was so sudden and violent. Her back was shoved up Damn. against the coffee machine, spilling the espresso everywhere. She tried to scream, but she couldn't get enough air. Chuck squeezed. His grip was like an iron around her thin neck. She silently gasped and spluttered as he choked her, still maintaining that glassy, almost dead look in his eye. 
I wonder if it's some sort of possession. Like doing this meant absolutely nothing to him. As things started to go dark, Dr. Moore's thoughts were naturally along the lines of, why is he doing this to me? And that's exactly when she oh, got Oh, yeah, answer. it is possession. There were two eyes that seemed almost to be floating in the darkness. I thought it would be like brainwashing at first, but then I thought, starting to think maybe it's some sort of possession. And security officer Walker, staring with equal indifference at this sudden and awful display of meaningless violence. She could only just make out the slender shape of the creature's mostly obsidian body, with the occasional patch of white. It was her. It all made sense now. It all made so much sense. The daughter of Snap. Dr. Moore's neck broke, leaving her last oh, thought forever unfinished. Security officer Walker loosened his grip, allowing Dr. Moore's body to slump to the ground. He turned to his mistress for approval, but she didn't say a word. She just left the room, and he obediently followed. This was the very first casualty of okay, a container breach that would like go on to claim the lives of 43 members of SCP Foundation personnel. Damn. Several male members of the staff experienced what can only be described as a descent into violent insanity, turning on fellow members of personnel and committing murder, largely through the act of strangulation. A female mobile task force was brought in to deal with this rapidly escalating female situation. Female mobile task force. The brainwashed staff members were relatively easy oh, to brainwash, not given the secure then. training of the MTF compared to on-site staff. But the being that did this to them would be a considerably more challenging foe. SCP-029, <laughs> the daughter of Shadow. I love the little add to detail that's going on in the background from the earlier show of 682 coming through the wall. I love that little detail. An extremely violent and dangerous Keter class anomaly. She was still loose on the site, and that meant... When was the last time in this series by this channel we got an actual designation of a class? I mean, what I don't remember in the last few reactions I've done them ever match mentioning safe, Euclid, or even Keter. Or even Thaumiel at this point. <coughs> I don't remember them mentioning that. Nobody was safe. The MTF prowled <laughs> the hallways in three-person squads, oh God. while another small detachment headed to the maintenance and security rooms. They couldn't rely on the on-site guards for any help on this one, considering half the brainwashed murderers they just terminated had formerly been site guards. One of the squads finally encountered SCP-029 in a dark hallway and engaged her in violent combat. The Daughter of Shadows is an incredibly formidable opponent. She's significantly stronger than a non-anomalous human being. She's highly resistant to most forms of damage, and her reflexes are around four times faster than some of the fastest recorded non-anomalous human reflexes. In other words, she can shrug off bullets and seems to be one of the world's most proficient stranglers. <laughs> you really don't want to have to engage with SCP-029 in a physical fight. One of the three MTF <laughs> operatives that. attempting to subdue SCP-029 was already Palmer. dead. Her neck practically caved in from the force of a squeeze when the lights finally came back on. While the Foundation didn't know a great deal about the Daughter of Shadows, they were aware of one thing. Her anomalous powers were significantly weakened when faced with bright light. The operatives in the maintenance and security rooms had turned up the lights in the hallway to their maximum brightness, stunning the Daughter of Shadows just long enough for the mobile task force to converge and through their combined strength and resources subdue and contain the creature again. She was hmm. swiftly delivered back to her high security containment chamber and locked away once more. The containment chamber is sealed with a triple airlock and powerful floodlights on the walls keep the creature in a constant state of stark illumination. A truly foolish mistake by security officer Walker, who'd been shot to death not even an hour prior by the mobile task force, had caused this particularly deadly containment breach. Oh, Ignoring very specific Foundation containment protocols out of his own sense of foolish, morbid curiosity, he'd strayed too close to SCP-029's containment chamber and been dragged into her terrible thrall. Considering the vast array of potential world or I even universe King. enders on the SCP Foundation's roster, SCP-029 is far from the most dangerous anomaly out there. But she's proven time and time again to be one of the most problematic to contain. And due to mm. her incredibly violent temperament and dangerous anomalous abilities, every time SCP-029 does breach containment, a lot of innocent Foundation employees are bound to die. The Daughter of Shadows, a self-given name that seems to be inspired by the fact her skin pigmentation is 80% true black, 
has a seemingly unquenchable bloodlust. Though, ironically, she despises the actual shedding of blood. SCP-029 really? has been shown to be capable of improvising a weapon out of all- That's quite interesting, seeing an SCP that does- that likes violence, but doesn't like blood spilling. That, that's interesting to me. <clears throat> almost any object. Truly the MacGyver of murder, but she will always kill in a manner that causes no blood to be spilled. Hence her preference for strangulation. She also has the ability to brainwash male victims into committing murder on her behalf by making them believe that she is some form of goddess. Oh, that's why they send an MTF female group team into the into the structure because her brainwashing ability has less potent effect on females. That's interesting. Despite showing clear sentience and sound tactical reasoning, it's impossible to reason with the Daughter of Shadows, as she has no compassion or better judgment to appeal to. Her requests for a bed, a blanket, some books, and some clothes have all been denied, due to the pretty justifiable belief that all these requests are just a pretense to get security lowered around her. This harsh treatment actually led to an official complaint by Dr. Erica Brodine. Mm. It stated, this is ridiculous. The girl can't even have clothes. We are not animals. Let her cover herself. Dr. Sophia Light posted an official reply saying, Dr. Bodine, you are granted permission to deliver clothes to SCP-029. Life sadly punished Dr. Bodine for her compassion. The Daughter of Shadows murdered her with the very clothes she brought in to keep it warm. And the tape of her grisly death is now used as an educational tool for anyone assigned to SCP-029. A grim mm. reminder of the real and present danger that the creature poses to anyone in its vicinity. Because of the nature of the anomaly and her abilities, the Foundation takes a very hands-off approach to interacting with her. Guards are posted outside, and not even food is brought into the chamber, as SCP-029 seems to be able to survive just fine without it. At this point, mm. you're probably wondering, what is this thing really? And how did the SCP Foundation find it in the first place? We'll tell you all we can about that, but be warned. SCP-029 is also linked to one of the darkest things the Foundation has ever needed to do in the pursuit of keeping an anomaly contained. Is she related to the Scarlet King? Or an offspring from one of the Seven Brides, SCP-231? That's my prediction. It all began with what seemed like an incredibly random assault on Agent Ramachandran, an SCP Foundation field operative stationed in rural India. The assailant attempted to strangle Agent Ramachandran before being quickly subdued. Because of the strangeness of the event, the agent began a weeks-long investigation into who the man was and why he'd commit this attack. That sent Agent Ramachandran down a frightening rabbit hole towards a small <laughs> but incredibly violent local cult. The men claimed to be Thuggies, a historically frightening group of roving robbers and murderers who terrorized parts of India throughout its long history. And what's more- Are they still around today? Or is it fictional but for the SCP Foundation? I'm curious though, because I do not know a lot about other countries, which I really should start doing. I really should. This particular sect <clears throat> of thugs seemed to worship the Daughter of Shadows as a kind of earthbound demigod. They believed that if they made one million sacrifices to the violence-loving entity, it would bring about the end of the world. However, they also believed that only sacrifices committed via strangulation would count towards their million-soul total. The Foundation amassed a small invasion force to infiltrate and take down their mountainside fortress from within. Naturally, they were met with considerable violent resistance, yeah. which sadly caused the death of Agent Ramachandran. The very reason we were able to locate the Daughter of Shadows in the first place, but in the end the Foundation prevailed. The Thuggies were either mm. slaughtered or repelled, and the Foundation operatives discovered SCP-029 within the temple, along with a huge number of corpses believed to be the cult's prior victims. Given how dark it was inside the temple, the Daughter of Shadows was a formidable level of power. She killed and brainwashed several of the agents who attempted to contain her but was eventually subdued and transported back to the nearest secure containment site. One of the most infamous incidents that SCP-029 is associated with happened around seven years after her capture. The level of dark pigmentation oh, so, on her skin- So seven years went by without a single containment breach? That's an, that is wild, because Keter class SCPs have a high chance of breaking out within just like a few months. I mean, look at the old man. He breaks out every couple of months. 
was beginning to increase, prompting concern among researchers. When they asked her what was happening, she simply said that her followers were on the move again, prompting concern that 029's thuggy cult was due for another resurgence. Knowing how dangerous this cult could be, the SCP Foundation decided that drastic action would be needed to deal with them this time. When they eventually located members of the cult, they began tracking them and gathering intelligence. They discovered that a mass gathering of the entire cult was imminent on a day that they believed to be holy. The Foundation waited until then to strike. When the cult was gathered in worship, the Foundation conducted an aerial strike, killing them all in an instant. The second this happened, Ow. the Daughter of Shadow sat bolt upright and screamed for several hours, mourning the death of her beloved followers. She learned a hard lesson that day. While she and her methods were undeniably brutal, when the situation called for it, the SCP Foundation could be plenty brutal as well. Yeah. Since this incident, SCP-029 has increased her efforts to escape, perhaps so she can get the jump on building a brand new cult. <laughs> now go check out SCP-1179 Centralian Fire Demon and SCP-2845 A- Okay. <laughs> Alright, well now I know a little bit more about the Daughter of Shadows. I was quite interested by that, because when I first ever heard of SCP-290, oh god, 209, I can't remember right now. I, last time I remember the, remember anything being mentioned, she's, I just heard that it was just like a black void, that's all I ever thought it was. No, no, there was actually a lot more to it that I didn't know before. So, now I know what the Daughter of Shadows is. And God, I don't know what SCP I have a video I'm going to react to next because it might be even crazier than this. But with that being said, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's react video. Please like and subscribe all this stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!